G'day and welcome to the next episode of Tech Adept Crafts. This week we are going to embark on a large ongoing project, the modular terrain board. What I'm going to be looking at is the use of a modular terrain board. What are the benefits? What are the disadvantages? What can you accomplish with a modular board? Now, why do we look at a modular board? A lot of gamers like to have a number of different scenes for their gaming. That's that's great. You playing on the same board can get very boring. But you don't always have the space to store lots and lots of beautifully crafted six foot by four foot boards, and that that presents a problem. How do you make terrain that is reusable? How do you make terrain that is easily stored? And how do you make it so that a single piece of terrain can have multiple uses, multiple uh, environments. Now I play a large number of different games, some fantasy, some sci-fi, and having pieces that will cross over into both can be very problematic. But one of the ways that you can do it is by having modular boards. You, uh, you may design your board based on an idea. You may design your board based on a, a world setting that you want. You may find a, a fantastic piece of scenery that you want to base your uh, model around. Okay, or you may have, you know, you might want to do a, a sea, a sea board. So having somewhere to store those boats is going to be really important. What is a modular board? A modular board is one that you're going to be able to have multiple uses out of. It's one that you're going to be able to change the setting of that board and you can have virtually an entirely new board. Uh, something that I have here, these are boards that, that I've made based on another company's design but I've then re redesigned it and reworked it. Um, a magnetic board system that locks together but I've actually designed the road system to go on top uh, and that that's a way that I can I can change that around and do a number of different settings and I've got my paving stones I've got my cobblestone road and I can put a building in between I can have it going into a little market square I have a number of ways that I can place that huge range of boards and I can I can set this out as a 10 foot or maybe 12 foot by four foot board. Massive city terrain. With that modular board, I also have other pieces where I change heights. That's a great way to, to um, add variety to your board and you can create stairs, you can put things at different heights. That gives you the opportunity uh, to have multi-layered boards. First thing that you need to do is to do some planning. What materials do you need? What sort of size uh, size do you want to go? What is your end goal? One of the things that that I will sit and do, I will sit and I will draw up my ideas of, of what I'm going to do, make, make notes about what goes into that campaign, and that gives me a really good setting for what I need to include in my build. Anywhere where you are drawing inspiration is going to be a, a good thing. You can take little ideas from a, a wide range of medium. When I'm planning some sort of project, be it a terrain project or a, or a painting project, I, I go to Pinterest and I form a folder. I stick whatever photos I can find into there and it's something that I go back to and look at and go, what ideas can I take from these? Do I use them all? No. Do I, uh, do I copy them exactly? No. I create my own idea but I get inspiration from what other people have done. The other thing you need to know is how much time do you have? Are you doing it for a game that's coming up soon? Are you doing this where you want to prepare it for when it's done that you that you run the game? Or is this just a, a, a passion that you're wanting to create a little diorama? How big a modular board are you gonna do? Do you wanna do, like uh, that one that I've just showed you, they are one foot tiles. They are 30 centimeter tiles. The, the size is going to determine a lot of the material that you're going to be able to use. Do you want to use um, massive blocks of foam? These, this is all foam that I think I bought at Bunnings and it is just, you know, I think it's 
what, 25 centimeters thick, so almost an inch thick. It is 120 centimeters by 60 centimeters. You can get a huge range of blocks of foam. These ones are low density foam. The one I just showed you before is high density foam and much stronger for terrain. This can be used to fill or if you're going to create your terrain out of this, the low density foam would need to be strengthened somehow. Maybe with plaster over the top, maybe uh, a few coats of Mod Podge or PVA glue, plaster of Paris, paper mache, whatever, whatever texture you're going for on that, this would need some extra layering. All right, I, um, I showed you the, the boat before. So one modular board that I have already started on, which I'm not really going to focus on in this tutorial. This is a Dockland board um, and I have my docks down here. This will all be water and um, all painted up for that. A removable, a removable lid so that you can actually play in the dock area and they've got storage area down there. That's all, that's all fantastic. This part here will be built up to be uh, linking up with my MDF terrain uh, and that way I can seamlessly go from docks into city uh, and that, that, um, that works there. How do I link that up modular? I have a number of different ways that I can set that board. I will have other C boards next to it which might go into a cove that, that runs off to the side. Um, I might have one that has a, a peninsula with a, uh, a watchtower or a, a lighthouse tower on that corner. I can put them in different directions. This one can also link with other boards to go into the city. I could do boards to the other side of it where I put it that this is the shore and we're doing a sea battle um, and just put down a plain uh, a sea mat that this sits on. This is a two foot by two foot uh, MDF block uh, with foam on top and it was one that I started work on this one for a full city which was which was going to have sewers embedded into the board and they would link and turn um, so that each board could be set up in a different way each time that you play. Play on top, take the board off the top, you've got the sewers down below. Modular, multiple uses for that. This dock board that I showed you, that brings up another point. Fixed or removable terrain. The MDF boards, these will all have removable terrain. Why? That's easy to store. This two foot by two foot dock board is the only one that has fixed terrain on it at this point. The docks, it needed to have the water effects going up onto the uh, dock area and it really did need to be fixed so I have stuck that one in. The rest of the boards, all of that terrain will be removable because that makes the board easier to store and the terrain can be used for something else. Fixed or removable, why would you choose each pattern? I think the bigger the board that you're going, the less you want the fixed option because that makes it difficult to store. But if you were working on, um, say, small blocks that you put together, you could actually have each building on its own block. You could have uh, terrain features that are each on their own individual block and so you put it together like Lego. Cost. Making a modular board can be a costly exercise if you don't plan ahead. Looking at what you have available, that's going to give you a good start. Do you have some foam? Do you have some cardboard? Do you have some MDF that you can use? Do you have any terrain pieces that you can put on the, on the board straight away? Looking at foam, looking at MDF, looking at um, paper mache, looking at sculptor mold, any sort of resource that you're going to use, source it out beforehand, get a good deal if you can, buy it in, buy it in bulk if you're going to do a lot of terrain, that can often save you some, uh, some dollars there. Don't discount having a, a really good bits box. Whenever I'm building models, there's always going to be leftover bits that you don't use. Uh, it might be skulls that you can put on a base, it might be backpacks, it, it, it could be anything there. Having a bits box of all of those things, you can use them in your terrain pieces. You go, well, I'm going to put a little skull in that, uh, in that corner there, like as if some creatures crawled out of the water and just died there. I'm going to 
paint that up as, uh, as a, uh, a skull by the side of the, the seat. When you're doing those sorts of things, using that bits box is a great way to add little details uh, on, onto your board. Then you also need to think about your painting. Getting this done with an airbrush, getting this done with, with hand painting. Either way, what's going to work? If your board is really delicate, maybe use an airbrush because getting in there with a, with a paintbrush might break things off. Source your paint so that you have enough of it. When you start painting a big board, doing, doing your painting, you want to try and get all of one color done across the entire board. When you go to um, paint your board, write down a list of what paints you use, the method that you do, film. Film how you do it, it's a great way. When I'm, when I'm going to do part of a project, I might look back at some of my old videos and say, how did I do that technique? There I've got my link. I can look at it exactly how it is done. Here are some photos of those one foot tiles that are designed and uh, how they can be set up in a variety of ways. The shots that you'll see at the end of this set are of the science fiction version or the more modern version of that. I'd also like to give a shout out to David Bennett and Lost Dragon, who both guessed that there were six dragons in the previous video. No, we're not counting the word dragon, and yes, we were counting the dragon on my shirt. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching. This is the modular board that I'm going to embark on now. This is going to be a goblin grotto, a goblin cave and it's going to use the mushroom pieces that I have already painted up uh, and I'll show you the link to that. These are fantastic pieces of terrain but I wanted to give them a bit more setting as to how I can use them. So I have had this piece of foam, this big massive piece of foam for many many years always looking at what I could possibly use it for. I'm going to put it into this Goblin Grotto as a way of building up a massive cliff face. I will cut it so that I can have a second corner piece on the opposite side of the board, reusing that piece for two separate two foot modular sections. And that way, that can be opposite sides of the board. I can also have them come together so the two sides can come together. I can have it a um, a rocky outcropping or I can have it in the middle of a valley. Either way that gives me dual purpose for that piece. Now here is one of the old failed um, waterfall board pieces. I'm going to repurpose them. I'm putting that again right up the top here as a means of building up a cliff face. This is going to be the biggest piece in this modular board. Uh, as it's going to be the entrance into this whole cabin system. And then, what's here you might ask? Some uh, amazing 3D prints that I have found, printed this off. This one's in multiple parts, uh, which I have just blue tacked together. This amazing skull piece, I thought would work beautifully with this cave entrance. Uh, this one from Thingiverse, I'll put a link in the description. This one from Printable Scenery, again I'll put a link in the description. This piece actually transitions from Goblin Grotto floors into like dungeon tile. Great way to transition from a dungeon terrain to a, a larger terrain. So I'm going to be placing this in between, sculpting out and my skull here, somehow I haven't quite worked out how to do this type yet, but it's going to be sitting on this board, on this uh, entrance, and I'm gonna paint it up to look like a carved stone entrance uh, that you actually go in through the mouth. There's some inspiration. How many times have you seen a picture or in a, in a movie where you see this skull mountain and the, the adventurers have to venture in through the mouth or in through the eyes or whatever? This is an idea that I looked at and just went, yeah, that's going to be my Goblin Grotto entrance. 
on the table, it's going to give me an opportunity to have um, elevated terrain where people can shoot down. It's going to give me an opportunity to have a waterfall if I want to. I might put a waterfall in there, who knows? Maybe a lava fall. This piece of terrain though was my inspiration for how I'm going to do this board. Find your inspiration, work out how you're going to do it, and then just get stuck in. I think once you have your planning stage done, jump on it. Get as much done as you can, because if you leave it, pieces tend to just collect dust. And that's not good for anyone's hobby. So over the next few months, I'm going to be doing a little bit on this uh, goblin board. I'm, I'm not going to rush it, but I'm going to keep working on it and show you progress videos as we go. This is, this is going to be a very big project for me and I'm very much looking forward to it and can't wait to show you guys how this goblin board turns out. Thank you for watching the video. Hope that you have learned something about designing your own modular board. Hope that you are inspired to possibly start your own large terrain project and I'd love to see the photos of that. Click like, click subscribe and leave a comment down the bottom. Uh, I gave a shout out during the video uh, for the people who won the little challenge last week. I, uh, I really appreciate everybody watching the video. Thank you very much. And we'll see you next week. Cheers.